Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be the waiting game. Well, I've got four, I actually have five emails that I'm going to go through today. And uh, the first one's going to be a woman, and she's basically asking what she can do to let a guy know that she's interested. So he goes about asking her out on a date because it sounds like he's a little clueless and can't get the subtle hints that she's been trying to give him. But before, I get into what I got a quote I'd like to share with you that I wrote. And it says, In life, sometimes we have to play the waiting game by being infinitely patient when it comes to love, successful negotiations, and getting what we want. When we continue to pursue the things, people, and circumstances we want instead of letting them come to us after expressing our desire without attachment, we actually push them away from us because the very nature of pursuing is to demonstrate what you don't have and what you lack. Once you can do without what you want, you then create the space for what you want to choose you back and effortlessly manifest in your life. So let's go ahead and get into this first email. And this is from a woman. She says, Hi, Corey. I am new to the pursuing a guy scene, but I found someone I'd like to pursue and need some advice. I think I have the case of the guy who is clueless to subtle hints that I'm interested in him. I hear that so much from women that I coach. The biggest complaint they have is guys don't know how to act like guys. They either act like total pussies or they're dickheads or guys basically, the ones that they really like seem to be taken or it turns out that they're gay. So he sa she says, could you give me some ideas on what to text him or what to do so it's not too much, but that he, he'd at least register the hint? Well, that's part of the problem is women obviously most of the time tend to talk in innuendos and give examples and hoping that he'll be able to read between the lines and figure things out. But us guys, we have logical brains. We're kind of, that's one of the things why I like to say that Men are like dogs and women are like cats because like with a dog, you got to say sit, lay down, roll over, don't shit on the carpet, that kind of thing. And so a simple way that you could say something to him, like she says, you know, or maybe do you have some text conversation or starter ideas? Now, if you got his number and you want to text him, the simple thing that you can say to him is if you want him to ask you out, you could say, let's say his name is Bob. Hey, Bob, this is Samantha. Just wanted to let you know that I think you're an incredibly handsome man, or you're really handsome, whatever it is that you think about him, obviously. And I would really like it if you at, invited me out for a drink or asked me out to dinner because I'd love to go with you. Something simple like that, and all he has to do is say, Hey, Samantha, why don't we go to dinner? When are you free? Something simple like that. Because talking in circles and hoping he figures it out, it is, if you can make things totally abundantly clear, because obviously you're the one asking me for advice and he's probably clueless like a lot of guys are, just make it obvious like that. And you can do it through the text. And at the end of the day, if he likes you, he'll invite you out. And if he doesn't, he'll say thanks but no thanks. She says, what do guys like and respond to well in being pursued subtly by women? Well, I know it's it's personally nice when a woman set, looks at looks you right in the eye and says, you're so fucking hot. I mean, I love that. But, you know, it's rare. And I've also found that when I say things like that to women, most of the time they're absolutely shocked because no man has ever talked to them in that way. A guy looks you right in the eye and says, you got a fucking unbelievable body. Most of the time the response to that is, what? They're just shocked. They're stunned that I would have the balls to say something like that publicly, especially if there's other people around. But it's a statement of my heart. It's a statement of what I want. It's a statement of my sexual desire. Now, even if she's in a relationship and I invite her out for a drink, she's always going to have at least something positive and she's going to be very flattered and she's going to thank me for it. But that's the best. We guys like that. So if you like this guy, just come right out and tell him you think he's handsome or you think he's hot or you think he's amazing and you'd love to go out with him. And it'd be nice. So... I'd li really like it if you'd invite me to dinner. Or I'd really like it if you ask me out. That's all you got to say. You know, it's nice when a woman has the confidence to do that. Or a woman, you know, I like when a woman just comes right out and asks me for my name and even takes my number and then she gets in touch with me. Hey, why don't we meet out for a drink? I've had a lot of women over the years that do that. It's nice, but it's very rare. 
And we like that. And you know, at the end of the day, because I talk to about 10% of my audience as women, most of the guys are going to be clueless like this. And so if you don't want to wait around for the guy to figure it out because society says, oh, the woman shouldn't pursue, she shouldn't do that. Even though most women like to do those things, go ahead and do it. So she says, I don't think I have the balls to ask him on a date outright, but I'm not sure what else to do. Like I said, the simple way to go about it is just let him know that you think he's handsome or you, you'd like to go to dinner. You'd like him to invite you out sometime for dinner and that'd be really great. Or you'd like him to take you out sometime or you'd like him to invite you out on a date. The clearer you can become, because remember, us guys were logically brained. So be completely blunt and that way he'll go, oh, okay, she really likes me then. So the, here's the second email I got, and this is from a guy. He says, my girl went back to her ex-husband. I think he has been working a get your ex back program because he's gone from you did this to me and you did that to me to it's my fault and I understand now why you broke up with me. She said, and one thing you understand is because this particular woman was obviously married to this guy, so she had a lot of time together with him. So she had a lot, probably a few years to build up a strong emotional bond. And by the time you met her, she was on the way out. But at the end of the day, a woman who's just getting out of a long-term relationship like that, her emotions are going to be all over the ice. And deep down, she would wish that it's going to work out with, with him. And if the guy starts doing things right, especially if he's found out about my work, then even if your game is totally tight, she still may dump you and go back to him just because – she has an emotional bond with him that formed over several years and you she's only known for a matter of weeks or a matter of months. He says he's been making all the right moves lately out of the blue and he's a fucked guy and I want her with me. Well, no amount of you wanting her is going to make her change her mind. He says she broke a date that she made with me an hour before to go be with him. She is at present back and forth and in their last encounter did not seal the deal. He says, I've had zero contact with her in the past three days and I plan not to contact her till she does. Good. That's the only thing you can do at this point because she ditched you. She blew you off to go back with her ex-husband and your attitude, that's part of not being attached to it like I shared in the quote. as having a take it or leave it type of attitude just like the woman whose email I answered earlier. It's throwing it out there, letting the guy know that, you're to that she's totally open to him inviting her out on a date. And then it's up to him to do the rest. And like in this particular case, because it takes two to make the relationship work, she's actually pushing you away at this point. And it's just like what Adam Carolla says, when a woman likes you, it's like she, it's, she makes it easy. She just starts opening the doors and all you really gotta do is walk through them. But if they start shutting in your face, which is obviously what's happening now, just turn around and walk away with the attitude of, hey, give me a call if it doesn't work out. I'd love to see you again. And that's all you can do. Because if this guy's been screwing up, there's a good chance that he'll start to screw up in the future, even if it's a month or so from now. But in the meantime, that's why you need to have other options. You need to move on with your life, especially if you're just learning this stuff so you don't get all emotionally wrapped up and hung up on her. He says, then she can apologize to me in person, which is my plan. It's like, don't do that. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. Where is there? Hang out, have drama, and hook up. That's not going to help your case. Being butthurt that she went back to her husband, it's like you should have the take it or leave it kind of attitude. You'd love to have her, but if she goes back to her husband, hey, I hope it works out. Maybe you guys can make it work this time. But if it doesn't, give me a call because I think you're absolutely fucking amazing and I'd love to see you again. And then you go on about your life and you forget about her. And that's the best thing that you can do. He says, what do I do at this point other than wait? I, what, do I have to, what do I say when she contacts me? He says, I prefer it to be all in person, whatever it may be. P.S. I've won a few battles here as she, as he may, he may be losing the war, so to speak. We can't look at it this way. If she reaches out to you and she calls you, assume she wants to see you. Hey, babe, great to hear from you. I'd love to see you. When are you free to get together next? Make a date. Hang out, have fun, and hook up. That's it. Keep it really simple. Don't complicate things. Because if you complicate things and you start getting pissed off and you want her to apologize and kiss your ass, think about it. Is that going to make her feel good or is that going to make her feel like shit? And if you make a woman feel like shit when she's with you or talking to you, that's what she's going to associate with you. And that's not going to create attraction. It's going to create the exact opposite. You want to create the space where she has the freedom to kind of come and go. 
And if the husband starts pursuing because he feels like he's losing her, he'll drive her right into your arms and you just hang back and catch her as she runs into your arms. So here's the third email. Guy says, hey, Corey. He says, I'm writing from Portugal. I'm a huge fan of your work and I need your coaching advice. He says, I actually sent an email to you a few weeks ago, but now I need an emergency email response because it involves the girl's birthdays coming soon. And he says, so long story short, I went into no contact mode starting last week of August with this girl I like who I met a couple of months ago while she was working for my company. He says, after she refused to go out with me two times, offering lame excuses and no counteroffer. Well, at that point, all you can say is like, hey, I would only ask once in that particular When a girl just flat out turns you down and doesn't bring up any other day, I would just, maybe she's got a boyfriend, maybe there's some other dude in the background. It's just, just say, hey, let me know if you change your mind. Again, that's part of having no attachment, meaning you are totally cool with either possibility. You'd love to hang out and get to know her and you'd love to see her. But if you don't, that's totally cool as well. That gives her the freedom to bounce and go wherever she wants to. But when you continue to pursue, you are just stating, just like I shared in the quote earlier in the video, that you don't deserve what you want, that you lack something. And the universe and women will obviously agree with you. But if you have a take it or leave it kind of attitude, hey, I'd love to see you. Hey, okay, let me know if you change your mind. Either, either way, either, either possibility is acceptable to you. He says, at this point, I must add that we spent considerable time together, got along great, talked about many things, shared personal experiences, and she seemed into me even though I played it cool. And he says, and I only invited her for a date the second week and outside of a work environment. But you're ignoring the fact that she still said no. It's like no amount of you liking her is going to make her want you. You deserve to have somebody who wants you back. You have to give her the space to want you back and to choose you as well. It has to be a mutual thing. You can't force, cajole, corral, or what's the word? Twist her arm into making her like you. If she's not willing to make the effort, hey, give me a call if you change your mind. I'd love to see you. I think you're amazing. He says, we're both single according to herself and she's very picky with men and hasn't had a boyfriend in more than a year and a half. He says, so after only one week of no contact, she started to do unusual things on her Facebook profile, which she knows for a fact through our conversations that I used to check every now and then. I did not react in any way, shape or form. I was basically a ghost and kept being so. So the weeks after that, while those unusual posts kept appearing every now and then on Facebook. He says, early last week, out of the blue, she sent a text message to my sister just saying hello and blowing a kiss to both of us. My sister just replied, everything's great, um, business is great, and I'm fine, and kisses back. So he says, two days went by, and she contacted me through my company's Facebook page, which she knows I manage and see, replying to a personal message containing a video of her on a job that she did that she's really kind of ashamed of that she thought really sucked. And it was a video that I had sent her a month ago to which she replied before saying, look at that, please don't tell anyone about that bad video I did. Yeah, a lot of models and actresses have you know some of their early work that they're like, that really sucks. And most models and actresses tend to be very insecure about themselves, including performers and musicians. And I have to coach a lot of those people. He says, I replied two days later with, I promise to keep it a secret, but I won't take responsibility if my sister has seen it. Because at this point, you've asked her twice. She shot you down both times. And so what you need to do at this point is nothing. Unless she brings up the two of you getting together, you're going to say nothing at this point. And that was an appropriate response. He says, she replied that same day with, you better hope not. And he says, I replied Monday with she has seen it. And she replied that same day with lucky me. And minutes before, she replied that she created an event on Facebook about her birthday. And she invited only personal friends, her family, and obviously my company's profile or my Facebook company's Facebook page. He says, I didn't reply to her last message on Facebook since I wouldn't know what to say. And that conversation couldn't get us anywhere. I also did an RSVP to her birthday invitation yet 
those kinds of things, I totally fucking ignore that bullshit on Facebook because I'm always getting game requests because on my personal Facebook, I got close to 2,000 people on there. And it's like probably 10 times a day I got, hey, so-and-so invited you to join poker this or game, you know, this fucking game. It's like, I don't pay attention to that bullshit. And most people ignore that stuff as well. So what I would do if I were you is I would ignore it. Act like you never even saw it. Because if she really wants you to come to her birthday party, she can text you. She'll get in touch with you. I think what you're doing here is you're kind of grasping at straws. You're trying to look for a reason to contact her. And it's just a bad way to go. She turned you down. She said no when you asked her out. You're, you should walk and never look back. He says her birthday is next Monday, but her dinner party is only scheduled the following week. And even though I went no contact, I always knew I was going to contact her on her birthday because on my birthday this past July, she contacted me through a chat service on her mobile phone while I was traveling abroad to wish me a happy birthday. This girl shot you down. She turned you down. It's like you're not her, her boyfriend or nothing. You barely know her. There's no point in chasing her going, hey, happy birthday. I, again, you want her to start reaching out to you and pursuing you. You want her to be bolder. If she really wants to see you, she's going to say, hey, are you coming to my birthday party? Like I said, if you ignore that RSVP, she may text you and go, hey, are you going to come to my birthday party? And you say, are you inviting me? And if she says, yeah, I'd really like you to be there. I was like, okay, well, then I'll definitely come. I'll bring a bottle of wine and after the party's over, you and I can hang out and we can have a few glasses of wine together or champagne or whatever. He says, I also feel now that if I want a shot with this girl, and I do, I must attend the birthday party because I know for a fact that she has told – Talk, talked about me to her friends and family and not showing up with certain result in them saying to her that I didn't care enough. You're, you're bullshitting yourself, dude. You're kind of filling in the blanks there a little bit. If the girl really likes you, she'll go out of your way to let you know that she wants you there. Remember, she blew you off. You asked her out twice and she said no. You're ignoring that. You got to look at what a woman's actions are. You're, you're reading too much into this situation. He says, I'm a little bit – because when you do this, when you just like do nothing, you're in, you do nothing, you're, you're totally – you're in action. It's actually can create attraction. It will, it's like a game of poker. She'll reveal her cards. She'll do a little bit more than she's been willing to do up until this point. He says, I'm a little confused on how to handle the present situation. I feel like it would be best to maintain no contact until next week and then call her to wish her a happy birthday and confirm that me and my sister's presence at the third dinner party and then play it cool and see how it goes. I wouldn't do anything. I would just ignore the dinner, dinner invitation like you haven't seen it. And if she brings up like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't really check those things. I get so many game requests and BS. It's like, I don't check those things. Are you inviting me? You're, you're, you want me to be there? Is, would it mean a lot to you if I came? Ask her those things. And she says, yeah, I really want you to be there. It's like, great. Then I'll be there. He says, and how about going to the birthday party? You think I'm right in going? No, I don't. You want her to go out of your, her way to let you know that it's important that you're there. And then if that's the case, then hang out, have fun, and hook up at some point in the birthday party. So that's what I would do if I were you. So here's the fourth email. The guy says, hey, Corey, I moved in this house about a year ago, and over time I liked this guy's daughter. She gave me all of the, all of the go signals, body language, laughing at my jokes, etc., but bit but I did nothing because, I f because of fear of rejection and staying at the same place as her would make me feel awkward. She's hanging out. She's touching you. It's like, dude, make a fucking move. It's like when a, when a girl's that obvious to you and you do nothing, you, you make yourself look weak and like you have no confidence. And when she's flicking her hair, running her fingers through her hair, touching your arm, sitting close to you on the couch – where her knee's touching yours, it's like she's physically contacting you. You can just look over and go, I think you need to get over with and kiss me right now. And you just look her right in the eyes and you say nothing. She'll either smile and kiss you or she'll start talking and coming up with an excuse. Either way, it doesn't matter. And then you can just say, are you just afraid that you're a lousy kisser? Is that the problem? Because we can practice all night and I promise you by the time we get done practicing, you'll be a great kisser. He says, I've, I've made a deal with her that if I achieve my goals, i.e. I get a good build and I play 12 songs in the bass guitar to her by December of this year, she agreed to kiss me in her sexy nightie. He says, if I lose, I buy her an iPod. Come on, man. That's like a bribe for sex. It's like, 
that's like a total pussified way of going about it. I'm sorry, dude, but that's just brutally honest. This girl's giving you sing signals and you didn't do anything to make a move. He says, when I look at things, though, I feel like my opportunity might have been lost. I'm the one chasing. Yeah. And I feel everything I do is a goal to get her interested, i.e. new car, play guitar, etc. It's like, yeah. You're pursuing. You're chasing. You, everything you do is a demonstration of what you don't have. That's why you should be inviting other girls over to come over, hang out, have fun, hook up. And then when the girl's gone, she'll be like, so what's going on with that girl? It's like, why? Are you a little jealous? <laughs> well, no. It's like, well, then why'd you bring it up? It's like, I think you're just jealous. And it's like, well, if you want a shot, you better kiss me right now because otherwise, you know, you snooze, you lose. Have fun with that. Be playful. What's the worst she can do? She'll either kiss you or she won't. If she brings something up like that, it means she likes you. He says, the fact is, I know she's put barriers up even though she's willing to kiss me for that bet. The kiss was my hope of going further. It's like, dude, it's a fucking bribe for a kiss. He says, I've only read a little bit of what I've found on, of you on the internet, but I'm buying your book. He says, I'm actually going to be moving away to another part of the city with the goal of maybe that she will miss me. It will hurt a bit, but it could be best for me. Like I said, that, you know, when you're hanging out with her and she's doing all those things, she's touching you, you just need to make a move. The way you're going about it is just totally fucking weak. It's kind of like a, a middle schooler would act. It's like, come on, dude, it's time to fucking man up and let your balls drop. And here's a fifth email. This guy says, I have a problem at work with a female that maliciously teases me. And what I mean by that is she will greet me or say goodbye in a various obvious flirtatious manner, make eye contact, and stares at me as if though she is in love with me, but it's completely no nonsense business like that everywhere in between. She doesn't even ask me how I'm doing, no small talk, etc. And will exploit the slimmest opportunity to be mean and nasty to me. When you, you can handle something like that, it's like when she's staring at you, you can say, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were a little sweet on me. I think you got a little bit of, of a crush on me. It's like, you know, you need to stop holding back and just reveal your feelings and tell me how you feel about me. You think I'm awesome, I'm handsome. And just go ahead and ask me out for a date or meet you out for a drink. And they just sit there and like, oh, that's not true. It's like, whatever. You know you like me. You think I'm hot. Then you just go back to working. And if she's mean to you, you can say, you know what? When I was a little boy in the playground and when a little girl would be mean to me like you're being to me right now, it always meant that what it really was going on is that she had a crush on me and she wanted to kiss me. So what are you waiting for? Be playful with her like that. He says she'll go out of her way to find me and run the same mixed signal routine every time she sees me. He says, and when I confront her about it, I asked her, why is she doing it? Have I done something to offend you? It's like, oh, come on, dude. It's like, that just shows that you have no idea. You're totally clueless. He says she just plays dumb while she said she's looking at me as if though she is deeply in love with me and act in acting and toying with me. He says, besides making the mistake of holding eye contact with her for a little too long one time, when I got the job about seven months ago, she's very attractive. Well, obviously you took the time to write me and, and book a email coaching. He says, I've never had been anything but business with this woman, but all of a sudden hostility for months now, and she won't say for what. Something simple that you can do at work is like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going out with my girlfriends, or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. It's like, oh, cool. Well, hey, I'm going town to town with, with a bunch of friends of mine. If you and your girlfriends happen to be down there, why don't you shoot me a text or something? Maybe we can meet up, have a drink together. Simple as that. If she likes you, she'll go, oh, let me get your number. And if she doesn't, she'll go, oh, yeah, I'll give you a text. And then she won't pull out her phone and get your number. And then that way you know. It's the easiest way to do it without risking anything or worrying about sexual harassment or whatever. He says... I can't prove what she is doing, so I can't go to human resources with accusations, according to an attorney. He says, ignoring her does not work, and she is escalating hostility, so I figured I would bounce this off of you and see if you had any experience in how to deal with this and defuse this to get this woman off my back before I lose my job. It's like, dude, it's like, fucking relax. Just do, do any one of the, the possibilities I share with you. That's the easiest way to go about it and to bust her and tease her playfully. It's like you want to act as if, of course you know she's got a crush on you. It's like that's why she's staring at you. If she's being mean to you, it's like, like I said, it's like just like little kids in the playground. That's what they do. They tease each other. Sometimes they're mean to each other. It's just that's their playful way of expressing that they like one another and, and call her out on that. Be playful about it. 
Worst thing she can say is, oh, no, I don't. I was like, whatever. Well, when you change your mind, let me know. And stop torturing yourself. And then the next time she's over standing next to you, he's like, well, you decided to stop torturing yourself? Or did you come over to ask me out? I was like, well, what are you doing? Why'd you come over? And you just say it like that. Be fun and be playful about it. That's all. You're not risking. She's coming to you. She's getting into your space and there's no reason for her to be there. Like that's the best way to handle those situations. Either that or just give out, tell her to get, you know, reach out to you if she's doing something fun over the weekend. And if she does, she'll pull out her phone and she'll get in text with you. She'll text you over the weekend. If she texts you, just say, hey, what's happening? How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So I suppose you want to get together. And you send that. And then she'll say, yeah, sure. Great. How about drinks? My place. Eight o'clock. And then send her your address. She'll either say yes or she'll say no. That's all you got to do. Keep it really simple. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to do email coaching or phone or Skype coaching. And you can select any one of those options by going to my website. Click the products tab, which will be the top of your screen on any page of my website. And follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon.